Trauma bonds, got close off of battle scars Equal pain, so we think it's equal game Same team, but it's different hearts Same goals, but it's different shots Thought we was winning the same Turns out you were just running me game Should've known, but I couldn't guess it It's a damn shame What's up everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Hoop MCs Brought to you by Nassim and Hassan Hassan, how are you this week? Doing well, man, doing well, how are you? I'm doing good, man, you know, just Another week in the NBA, you feel me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What do we got on the agenda? Well, first, I I just want to get this out of the way. Injuries have been the biggest part of the season, uh, the shortened season. So to kick it off, I want to talk about some players returning and some players getting hurt at the worst possible time. I want to start with Harden. Uh, He mentioned that he will be back before the playoffs. We can anticipate that will be within a week or two. How do you feel about that? Uh, I think... I'm definite. Well, I don't think it matters in the grand scheme of things, even if he's back, like right before the playoffs. Uh, Well, actually, it does, of course, just because they're going to have full strength. But I think everybody wanted to see them at least try to gel before the playoffs coming in. But um, I don't know if you saw the stat, but like the Nets are like 27 and 7, I think, with Harden, which is like a 65 win pace team. Uh, I'm going to just go ahead and jump into yeah, this, I know, buddy. I know you're waiting for it. Just do it. Just get it over with. <laughs> yeah, let's just go. Last week, um, I got a lot of heat uh, when I posted a clip on Instagram from our last episode where I said, AD is the best player on the team while LeBron is the most important. And uh, y- your argument was like, how can someone who is recognized as the best player in the league be not be the best player on his team? Uh, I'm just saying, KD Harden is evidence of that. No, it's not. Yes, it is. Let me let me go. And back. and I'm and I actually have a better way of um, explaining my point. But go ahead. Okay, so y- you were right about there being most important player and a best player on the team. Okay, where you're wrong, and I admitted that I was wrong on the tweet. I know you saw it. But where you're wrong is you said Anthony Davis is better for the team than LeBron James. Correct. He's not. So when I say he's better for the team, I'm saying he's like he's the best player for that team. That's what I meant. I still I I'm still giving it to LeBron because look at I mean the Pelicans just played or the trope the Lakers just played yesterday without LeBron. AD had a great game and they still lost because he's not the most important player. He's also not their best player. No, no, no. AD is their best player, but he's he's not the most important player. Give me one good reason why he's their best player. Since you want to explain it, just like I'll let you take it from here. Okay, sure. So first of all, let me go ahead and make the analogy to a different team, which is KD and Harden, right? So everybody universally recognizes that KD is the second best player. Almost everybody. It's kind of like universally recognized that KD is the second best player in the league after LeBron James, right? So with that being said, if he's the second best player... We know that Harden is not number one, meaning so KD is better. But look at the look at the stats that back this up. Harden, because of the role that he plays, it's critical to the net success. Mm -hmm. But we all know that KD is the better player. He's their best player, but Harden is definitely the most important player for that team. So when I said with when I made that statement last week with AD and LeBron. I'm saying that for the Lakers, AD assumes a role in which he's asked to do a lot that puts him in a position to be the best player. You know, primarily in the, on the scoring end, and he plays great defense. So, I mean, like, he's definitely, production-wise, that, that guy is definitely the most important player. However, Lakers aren't going to go anywhere without LeBron James. Obviously, nobody's going to go anywhere without a player of that magnitude for their team. Lebr- LeBron James is definitely the more critical, like the important player for that team because he does a lot in the sense of that he's driving the offense. Um, so the ball's always in his hands. Like he's a leader. Uh-huh. So, like, those are the points that I'm trying to make. That's fair. Okay. Yeah. But last week you were saying individually on the team that AD is better than LeBron, were you not? So. If I did what I was saying that he is the better player for that team compared to LeBron, yes. I still don't agree. I'm not going to lie to you. But what part of that doesn't make sense? The fact that the Lakers need LeBron more than they need AD. 
that shows that he's no, no, they team. do because he's more important for that team. So how is he, how is he not the best player for that team if he's also the most important player for that team? Because now you're you're mixing up words because no, if, he's not the most he's not the best player in the sense of like talent and skill. Okay. So I'm saying like for the Lakers, talent and skill, AD is more important, and you know this is to be true. Like the guy. The guy's a beast on the offensive end and defense. You said you mean to tell me that's not going to hurt them? Yeah, like I mean, if it's it, missing, it's it's going to hurt them more. I think than like if LeBron. Well, I'm I'm not going to even go down that. <laughs> and do it. I, I I'm not because I I'm I'm basically just making the point that AD production wise, mm-hmm. similar to KD production wise, is the best and like. So it, it can get confusing because I said that KD is the second best player, and we know that KD in a vacuum is a better player than Harden. Mm-hmm. However, LeBron in a vacuum is better than AD. But for the Lakers, I'm saying that he's the best player on that team. Does that make a little bit more sense or no? I'm not going to lie. It just sounds like you're reiterating what the most important player is. I get what you're saying, but it's also like you have to see where you're coming from. It sounds very contradicting because you're saying he's the best player for that team, but he's not the most important player. I that, yeah, that I, I but, feel like that's almost the same thing at that point. So how does... Okay, so you said that it makes sense for the Nets, right? I, that well, analogy. Why does it make sense for the Nets? I didn't say that. I said KD was better, right? And then I also said Harden was more important. But I wasn't as. Uh, I wasn't. But why does that make sense to you? Because KD's a better player, but Harden's more important to that team. Okay. Okay. So you're saying that it works in that case. I'm saying it works because we're talking about individual skill. The way you're talking about it right now, I'm not gonna lie. I'm pretty confused because again, it just sounds like you're reiterating most important player. Like I'm not being clear. You you are, but like your definition is so similar to most important player. Like it just sounds like you're you're mirroring them. So, uh, oh, I'm mirroring best player and most important player for yeah. KD, uh, AD you, and LeBron? Last week, when you were talking about best player, I was under the assumption you're talking about individual skill. That's why I looked at you like... For the team. For the team. For the Lakers. And when you say that, the, it just sounds like you're talking about the most important player. Because the most important player is also no, I'm saying, for the team. I'm saying look at that team specifically. Uh-huh. And who is the best player and the most important player for that team. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay. So I'm talking about specifically focus on the Los Angeles Lakers. Does that make more? I get what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not talking about in the league. Uh Don't don't bring the whole league up. Because when you bring the whole league up, now you got to start looking at, like, in a vacuum. Like, you start judging. Because LeBron James in a vacuum, we know that he's the best player. Because he can go to any team and make them successful, right? Yes. Yes. That's exactly. That that's what I'm saying. It it get it gets confusing or contradictory once you bring it outside of that basketball team. Okay, this has been the most confusing. Did, did I move you a little bit more Do to you, my side? Just will, a little bit. Will it make you happy? No, no, no. I want the honesty. Honestly, still a little confused, but you did Let's, convince <laughs> me about the Harden and KD thing. Okay, so you got you you did kind of move me. I mean, I I looked at it from a different perspective with them. I'm not satisfied. Let's right, go to fine. the next topic anyways. Right. <laughs> okay, well, we, we started with the Harden injury. Let's circle back since we're already talking about AD and LeBron. Uh, we went down a rabbit hole with that one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, like, since we're already talking about AD and LeBron, we want to talk about I'm not I'm not convinced AD is 100%. I know he played well last night, but, I mean, I'm not sure if there's more to his injury than is being said because when he went down two days ago uh, – he was like grabbing his ankle, like it looked like he landed awkwardly. But then they ruled it back spasm. Yeah, I saw that. So I'm not sure if he, they're just playing it off or if, if he was just grabbing the wrong thing. I really don't know. But I mean, he looked fine against the Blazers, even though they lost. But LeBron James is who I'm more concerned about because I mean they need him because he's the most important player. But also, like boom, <laughs> uh, yeah. What's it called? Um, I actually wanted to talk a little bit more about the Lakers. We got a we got a couple of things to talk about the Lakers. Yeah. Um, I think they're screwed, dude. Do I don't think, think so? I don't think they're coming out of the West. Um, I mean, before we go down there, though. So the Blazers won yesterday, and now they own the tiebreaker. Yeah. So they're they're. It's most likely they're going to be playing in the play. The Lakers. Don't you think so? Yeah. I was looking at the schedule. I think both teams. I think got it similarly tough. Mm-hmm. But if, like, LeBron doesn't come back 
within the next one or two games, I could definitely see the Lakers playing in the play-in for sure. And then, I mean, even then, it's not guaranteed they'll be functional and healthy. So then you're going against a Warriors team or a Grizzlies team. Yeah, I mean, you you can make the case that if LeBron misses another game and the Lakers lose, they can say, like, you know what? Forget this, man. Just go ahead, rest AD and LeBron until the playoffs because it's more important for them to both be close to 100%, if not 100%, even if it means playing in the playoffs even if it means playing in the play-in tournament. You know what I'm saying? I think in their mind, they're already thinking about it. Like, they're already... Yeah. They're, that's why LeBron came out, and I, I don't mean to, like, yeah. jump topics, but that's why he came out and said the play-in tournament is whoever so, came up with that needs to be fired. Yeah. I, I have some thoughts about that. So do I. Yeah. And I want to revisit that in a sec. I And then he also said that his ankle will never be fully healed, which may, I think, is a little exaggeration because you can't just say that, like two months or a month before playoffs and have your excuse ready to go you see why i'm get i get annoyed at lebron james now but your your hatred is because he's like corny right and i that's, that's such a corny thing to say it, it it makes you look like you know a wimp a pussy i get that but i mean he's still the greatest player probably top three greatest player of 100 percent and you could still be corny yeah, and, that's like, fair. a bitch <laughs> still. <laughs> okay, <laughs> like, I, I agree with that. He, yeah. First uh, of all, with the play-in tournament, he was, um, what's it called? Uh, shoot. Last year, I think, whenever they proposed it, he was all for it. Yeah, there's a, right? there's articles. like. Yeah, there's an article. He was, like, saying, like, oh, yeah, you got these teams. They're all close. You might as well let them duke it out. And then since he's put in that position, obviously, I think it's just an embarrassment for him. It's coming. It's more so from, like, a... People are going to look down on him for that. Like, yo, this guy had to play in a play-in tournament to qualify for the playoffs. Yeah. So I don't think ultimately, like, I think his beef is not with the format. It's more so of, like, his what ego. it does for his legacy. Yeah. You know? That's fair. But, I mean, at the same time, I don't really think that's messing up his legacy because he's already, like, he he's a top eight seed. So no one, I don't think anyone's going to bash him if he wins the play-in tournament and then goes on to the playoffs. Like, he was already in the playoffs even if they didn't have the tournament. So... I mean, if he goes ahead and wins the play-in, like, your legacy's fine. But if you lose the play-in, I mean, that, then you have no right to be in the playoffs to begin with. You lost to the Spurs or the Grizzlies. That's true. Um, I think LeBron just covered his bases. Like, for in case something happens, people can always point out, like, oh, yeah, well, even LeBron said, like, he's never going to be healthy. Like, that ankle injury is a lot more serious or whatever. Like, he definitely is covered his bases with the comment about like yeah i'll never be 100 percent." by the way who says that unless you have like some sort of like structural tear yeah in your ankle okay i get why you would say that yeah but a that's not the case i don't know if he needs to reveal that or the nba has the right to reveal that or whatever the case may be i just think he was being a pussy about all of it i do think he he is kind of over exaggerating yeah um I had something in mind that I wanted to say, but I completely forgot about it. It's all good. I don't know. Oh, the play-in tournament? Like no, it was, format? About, it was about LeBron specifically, and I just can't remember. Oh, <clears throat> at the beginning, our very first episode, I'm pretty sure you could go back and reference this. I, I probably said it two or three times where I said that the Lakers, the only way they're going to lose this, uh, the only way they're not going to make the finals or if they're going to have trouble is if is because LeBron and AD will not be healthy because they had the shortest offseason. And it's literally been happening all season for them. I, I don't. I'm sure a lot of people predicted this, but like I feel like the Lakers could have been way more careful with how they were managing AD and LeBron before their injuries. Yeah, I mean, what had happened, I think, was like it was. It first started off with AD, and then it trickled down to like not trickled down, but like AD got hurt with his uh, like it was an Achilles scare. Yeah, like they wanted to shut him down. And I guess treat it because it could have obviously been something much more worse. And that could have been a factor of a shortened off season, carrying a much heavier uh, load. Um, as far as LeBron James, LeBron James was just a freak injury. That was whenever that guy just fell and rolled his ankle really badly. Yeah. So, I mean, like, I don't think, I don't think load management would have done I just feel really? like it helps prevent those kind of freak injuries. Yeah, I mean, less less time playing, obviously, less time, less well, probability to get hurt, I, I suppose. Yeah, I guess. But, I mean, even then, I just feel like the more load management they would have had this season, 
like not even just the fact that they had less time just i feel like it's more it's better for the body like the freak injury could have happened because like it's a he, freak injury at the end of the day you I, know it also could have been f- like physical fatigue you know I don't remember. Did he land awkwardly or what? No, happened? some dude literally fell on his ankle. Oh, that's right. That's what I'm saying. Like, I, bet, I, don't, I, I don't. I'm not sure if load management could have prevented that. Yeah, you can't right. do anything in that case. I, I was thinking he landed awkward. I could remember. Yeah. No, no, no. I, I th- yeah. So I'm saying like that couldn't. That just happened. That was just a freak thing. Nobody could have predicted that. Yeah. I think. Yeah. yeah so I, I don't think it's worth talking about that anymore. As far as with AD, I think because he's the most, he's the best player on that team. They could have definitely load managed him more, a little bit better than what they did. Yeah, his wow. his I feel like was actually more physical fatigue. I mean, he's also been injury prone for a lot of his career. Yeah, that's true. Uh, so you and I, I think last week we referenced the plan tournament, but we just had no idea about the format. Yeah, we finally looked into it. What do you think about the, what do you think about the format? Like in terms of what needs to happen for nine and ten to get in versus seven and eight. I think it's really weird. Let me just go ahead and break it down to the audience yeah. real quick. Basically, the seventh and eighth seed will play a game. The winner of that game clinches the seventh seed. Then the ninth and tenth seed will also be playing a game. Whoever loses that goes home. So then it'll be the loser of the seven eight game and the winner of the nine ten game playing each other for the eighth seed. Right. I think it's really weird. I thought they should have stuck with seven versus ten, eight versus nine. To make it like, like a play-in tournament. You're like, why? Why are the two best teams out of that uh, of those four playing each other off rip? But here's the problem with that, though. You're not incentivizing. Okay, so you're saying, okay, so seven and ten play each other, eight and nine play each other. Let's yeah. say seven beats ten, nine beats eight. What mm-hmm. happens then? The there the both of them I, go in. Yeah, I see what you're saying. You got you got to definitely level out the playing field by making it like okay nine and ten cool you're in the playing tournament but you got to win twice whereas seven and eight you just need to win once. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. It's still, I guess it's still kind of like the same thing. You I mean the lower seed has to win two games at the end of the day and the higher seed just needs to win one. But if seven and ten play each other, seven wins. Are you saying that they automatically advance or do they need to win one more? No, I was saying like seven would need to win one, ten would need to win two. Like how they exactly how they did it oh, last okay. year. Yeah, I, I honestly I think that the tournament, what's it called, the way that they set it up makes sense. I don't really have a problem with it, um, just because of the fact that, I mean, like you have seven and, like I I see where I see why it definitely gets more pushback just because of the fact that like you look at the gap between seven and ten. So if the Lakers end up being number seven. They're going to be like, what, six, seven games, maybe above 500. Yeah. Whereas the 10th seed, which is who's on the 10th the seed? Spurs. The Spurs. They might be like one or two games. Yeah. So, like. And plus, nobody wants to watch the Spurs. I'm nobody wants to watch the Spurs, but at the same time, it's like number seven's got to be like, man, like, you know, I'm seven games above 500, and I got to worry about my playoff spot being taken by a 10th seed. Yeah. Like a team that's not even 500. Do you. Do you know the potential first matchup for for the play-in? You know what uh, it's like what it's most likely going to be. Lakers and um, hold on, don't tell me Lakers and Memphis. For the no, no it's going to be it's, right now. It's looking like it'll be Lakers versus Warriors. Oh, which would be a pretty sick matchup. right? That would be a sick matchup, man. I mean, I know the NBA is foaming at the mouth at that right now. Yeah, because that's the best uh, possible matchup. Le- you could LeBron have. Curry. That's yeah. something that they want to see again, obviously. Um, that's crazy, by the way. Like they go from facing each other into the finals, and now potentially facing each other for the playing tournament. Yeah, and you know what's going to be even more uh, crazy is that if the Warriors end up making the eighth seed, John Morant is probably going to miss the playoffs by a game once again. Yeah, because even if if the Grizzlies, let's say the Grizzlies beat the Spurs, and then they move on to play the loser, which is in, in this case most likely the Warriors, right? Yeah. So this is assuming the Lakers are healthy, by the way. Right. Um, th- that means that he could miss the playoffs again, once again, to Steph Curry. Um, that That's tragic, man. Yeah. That uh, would, <laughs> I don't know how I'd feel if I was John Moran. I mean, yeah. I know he's not going to go anywhere. It's only second year. But Yo, he's been playing like a beast, though, man. Like yeah. He's been putting up numbers. I feel bad for him, honestly. I want him to succeed. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I want him because I have his Top Shot card, and uh, that shit went down in value big time. So, <laughs> dude, everything just tanked. I hate, I hate Top Shot right now. Uh, yeah, but uh, 
in the grand scheme of things, for or not in the bigger picture of things for the playoffs, um, I think. Uh, so I said earlier that I don't see the Lakers coming out in the West. I'm gonna go ahead and just say I think we're gonna see Clippers in the finals. You think so? Yeah, I, I I'm I'm I think Clippers are probably the most safest bet just because expectations wise, everybody knew that they were talented. They're deep. Um, they should have been in the conference finals last year, but they choked. Yeah, I think with the Nuggets missing Murray, it's gonna show. A, it's gonna show a little bit more in the playoffs. Um, you said that you can't really trust the Suns. I said what well, I, I I was gonna say. I trust them more than the Clippers. I said that last week too. Oh, you did? Yeah. Okay. Well, you can't really trust the Jazz, I guess. No. And no. then with the Suns, um, you can make the argument like, okay, well, outside of Chris Paul. You can't really like you don't know what to expect just because Devin Booker's never been in the playoffs. I've been yeah. saying that, by the way. No, 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 I'm saying you could make the argument, yeah. which is fine. And of course, you can argue the opposition that like oh, it doesn't really matter. But I'm just saying that like I think Clippers are definitely gonna be the favored in my opinion. I think they came out with favor like the odds, right? They did. They did. I think, and somebody put like. Lakers have an 8% chance of winning now. Man, if I was a betting man, I'd put $100 on them. On the Lakers? Yeah, if they're healthy, I mean, they're winning it, obviously. But I think, uh, to to your point about the Clippers being the next favorite, after the Lakers, I would go with the the Suns. I can't do the the Clippers. I don't know what it is. But they're they're worse to me than the Suns. Like, Uh, in terms of of believing. So, I think... I think... I think uh, what's it called? Talent wise, though, the Clippers are better. There's a huge gap between yeah. get a talent, which is fair. Yeah, but I, I don't know. I think just Chris Paul and Devin Booker. I think that's a great duo already. Chris Paul's leadership. I don't think he's gonna. It's gonna let him lose to the Clippers. If I'm being honest with you, <clears throat> even though he lost a game seven to the Rockets. Yo, last. I forgot about that narrative. Yeah, Chris Paul playing the Clippers. I can. Uh, yeah, I could, I could see how that you know pans out that would be pretty cool too uh, like i said i would love to see the f- I, I would love i think i said this last uh last episode i i would love to see the suns in the finals i think that would be great for the nba but uh, you know like sorry to cut you off but no, like good. at the end of the day i, I also kind of want to look at who's going to be the best matchup for the nets because i mean i don't want a 4-0 finals that's true. And Lakers, obviously. Yeah. They're, they're probably going to be the best. But I'm saying that there's just been so much dysfunctionality with that team that I'm not even sure if they would necessarily be the best matchup because we just don't know what to expect, man. Like, are are you still of the belief that if they enter the playoffs healthy, they're going to just smoke through everybody? Yeah, because, I mean, we've seen this before with LeBron teams. We saw it whenever he had D. Wade. D. Rose and all those other people on the Cavs team. That was the most random assortment of people. But he was never in this situation where he was like, he's going to be coming in. He, regardless, I don't think he's going to, even if he enters it, like playing two, three games in the regular season, there's still going to be some question about like whether his like endurance or if he's like fully 100%. Like there's still going to be some caution on that end. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. I, this is the first time that he's had an injury scare going into the playoffs. I will say, I feel like every year, other than when he was in Miami, or like his last two years or three years, there was always questions about LeBron. Is he going to be able to make this finals run? And he always ends up doing it. So I think it's one of those times where we're kind of, we're living in the moment, I guess. Let me ask you this. So I saw this on one of those, like, I I think I may have seen it on first take. But the question is, is LeBron officially in the decline? Like, are we witnessing him in the decline? I don't think so. No, no. I mean, it's it's unfair to say that just because again they had the shortest off season in NBA history, and then they're playing on top of that yeah. seventy two games, and in. it was a freak injury as well. So it's not like oh, like he was just playing, and then he just kind of fatigue wore off on him, and like you know what I'm saying? Like he's yeah. essentially degrading in front of our eyes. Um, no, of I, course, Max Kellerman was saying like, oh yeah, he's. A- <laughs> Ever since his I want equal dollar take, I'll never listen to him again. Do you remember that, by the <laughs> yeah, way? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God, dude. dude there was this TikTok. It was funny. <laughs> <laughs> I got to show it to you after this episode. But, uh, yeah. Was like, it? Okay. Can I, is, was it the one where there was, like, laser beams pointed at the earth? And then they were like, is that the Grim Reaper? And they pointed to Andre Iguodala. <laughs> <laughs> no, it wasn't that. You know those TikToks where it was, like, they're, they're saying something. 
and then they're like, no, that's oh, yeah, I saw the trying one. to make it rhyme. He yeah. was like, no, that's something. He's like, oh, and I, then it pans to, to, <laughs> uh, to Max man. Kellerman. I want Iguodala. <laughs> I saw that one. I don't remember what he said he wanted. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. Um, man, that was the worst take in NBA history, probably. It really bad. Oh, I, I know what you're talking about. Um, there, there, it was a meme either on Twitter. I think it was a meme on Twitter. Yeah. But somebody was basically um, uh, like referencing that moment, and it was like basically Earth just exploded because yeah. <laughs> he wanted. He was like, yeah, the Martians got the lasers pointed on Earth. I want Iguodala to take the shot. <laughs> Dude, if that guy was ever president, we'd be in World War Seven. Oh right my now. God, worse than Trump. Anyways, this speaking is not, of bad takes, not a political show, but go ahead. Speaking of bad takes. Do you get what I'm transitioning to? Bad takes, bad takes. No, go ahead. Uh, oh, Nick, yes, go ahead. Nick Wright calling Jokic, the, uh, if he wins MVP, the worst MVP in the last 30 years. I think that's a pretty awful take, and I feel like it's very disrespectful, actually. So here's my issue with that. A, Jokic is what, like seventh year in the league? Yeah. So, like, he's basically, he was saying from a talent standpoint of all the guys who won the MVP, which is from 1990 and onwards, that Jokic is worse in talent, which is a stupid take to make just because of the simple fact that, like, he's only in year seven. Yeah. You don't know what this guy is going to be eventually. He's not, I don't he think could be a, a multiple time champion by the time his career is said and done. Yeah. Um, he could he he and okay I won't say he had a realistic chance but he had a realistic chance of going to the finals if it wasn't for an injury to his point guard yeah so it's a little unfair to say that and I mean if you look at the history of the MVPs in the last thirty years uh, hold on before hold, we do that before from, we do that from nineteen ninety and onwards who can you remember from the big men that won an MVP because I want to compare Jokic to them Shaq I think well yeah Sha- Shaq KG. I think Tim Duncan may have won an MVP. Yeah. Derek Nowitzki, uh, Charles Barkley, Hakeem Olajuwon. I don't know if Karl Malone also won. I think Karl yeah, Malone won, may have won. won. Um, I think we may have. Did Patrick Ewing won one. I thought about him, but I'm not entirely too sure, truthfully. But just out of those alone, yeah, I can see Jokic not being better than any of them. But do you? Can, First of all, let me ask you this. Do you think Jokic can be better than any of those big men that I mentioned? I think he can compete with like the like the Charles Barkley kind of group just because I mean, Charles Barkley and KG probably the most realistic. Yeah, and yeah. because they were dogs, but Jokic is more like finesse and smart. Like skill-wise, I think he's better than them. Yeah, I that's fair to say. Just because like again, KG and Charles Barkley were like dogs. They weren't like yeah. the the most skilled, I guess. But that's fair. I also think uh, like Jokic is one of the smartest people in the NBA yeah. right now. I mean, he's like clearly he's not the most athletic. We've all like been saying that. Yeah. So just the fact that he's putting up MVP numbers with with my bo- type of body, <laughs> like clearly <laughs> says something to his smarts of the game. Yeah, obviously he's definitely out of those big men that we listed. He's by far the probably. I'm not going to say he's more skilled than Hakeem. He's not more skilled than Hakeem, but yeah. he's definitely the second most skilled big man out of those that I listed out. Like, he Tim, he doesn't have... Uh, Tim, maybe Tim Duncan's a little more skilled. Uh, okay, I'm okay with that. Okay. Uh, but he's definitely the best passer, 100%, yeah. than all those big men. Yeah. Um, he, he can definitely score with them, like, in terms of, like, he can hold his own in terms of scoring. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. Uh, but th- it, it was a bad take. Yeah, I think the biggest difference between... But before we talk about the last 30 years MVPs, the biggest difference between Jokic and them is uh, the defensive presence. I mean, like, you yeah. felt everybody else's defensive presence. I don't really know. Is Jokic, like, a premier defender? Uh, he's I feel like, like he's middle of the he, pack. He's, like, middle of the pack, yeah. Yeah, so that's, the, again, a, another big difference. That's where physicality comes in. Yeah. Like, how you're built. He's just a big body, so, like, he yeah. can hold his own. Yeah. Yeah. But to go back to the last 30 years, I, I would say, like, Steve Nash's MVP season. That's, that's exactly, exactly who I thought, yeah. but... Do you definitely Steve Nash was more disappointing mm-hmm. than Jokic, but I think Nick Wright was just talking about purely from a like talented standpoint. Like, okay, you look at who Jokic is and compare to everybody else who won it. Who, by the way, he's already wrong just because Jokic is going to be a better player overall than Derrick Rose. That's exactly who I was thinking yeah. too. And that, I know people are going to be like, ah, oh, his injuries 
we don't know. So, we, like, it's yeah, fair he, to say Jokic has exactly, a better player. Exactly, 100%. Player. We're just simply looking at the facts. Like, Jokic, most likely, if barring any sort of major injury, he's going to be ahead of Derrick Rose. Yeah. So, so that, that was just an awful take. Uh, and I don't know if he's talking about that or if he's just talking about season performance, though. Because there's no way he could talk about season performance, though, because the guy's a big man, nearly averaging a triple double. He's a- almost averaging a triple double, and then also at the same time, if you look at the other candidates, he's shitting on them in ev- almost every other category too. Yeah. So, whatever way you want to look at, however Nick Wright was talking about it, it just it was a yeah. very bad take, yeah. honestly. Yeah, that guy is definitely an idiot. Well, since we're on idiots, let's go ahead and talk about Kendrick Perkins talking about. Harder to win in the NF, uh, to win in the NBA versus the NFL. Yeah, so this was another, I think, first take uh, topic, and they they were bringing up LeBron James, and like it was in the context of LeBron James and Tom Brady. So they were saying like it was uh, Kendrick Perkins and Ryan Clark who played in the NFL. Um, they were talking about like what's harder to win in the NFL or the NBA. Kendrick Perkins, he was saying the NBA. Ryan Clark was saying the NFL. What do you think? It's the NFL. You're wrong. Okay. <laughs> Let's just go. So, Kendrick Perkins, my man, you're not an idiot on this one. Go ahead and make your point, and I'm going to go ahead and dismantle it real quick. Okay. The NFL is the hardest, first off, because it's a single elimination. Okay. That's already putting the stakes at an all-time high. Second off, it's a team game. So, no matter how great you are, as Patrick Mahomes showed in the Super Bowl, if your team isn't with you on that level up to par on that night, you're done. So, and that can ruin your legacy, literally. So, like, look at Drew Brees. Just because uh, he his team has underperformed multiple times in the playoffs, it's destroyed his legacy because his team hasn't been able to make the Super Bowl. And they also had a missed call, which was kind of bull. But anyways, like, I, NFL is more of a team game, and you need every single person on that team to be up to par on that night. If, if people are having a bad night, you're lost. And there's nothing you can do to control that. In the NBA... You have four chances, and you also have the like. If you have a LeBron James, he can dominate the series. If you have a if you have a Patrick Mahomes in the NFL, he he has an off night, or his team has an off night. Hey, there there's no saving you. You're done. Yeah, I just want to hear you. Uh, you're okay. wrong, by the way. The NFL is way harder to win. No, no, no. So here here's the reason why you're wrong. So, I th- what Ryan Clark was talking about was like, oh yeah, well, because of the super teams, we already know who's going to be in the finals. Yada yada yada. That's fine. Okay. The way I look at this question is he's talking about from an overall perspective to teams. Is it easier to win in the NBA or tougher to win in the NBA versus the NFL? The reason why it's tougher in the NBA is is because exactly what you said. You made my point. So I'm really happy at the fact How? that I don't even need to like argue that much because of the fact that you enter the playoffs and it's first of all, if you enter as a wild card, you need to win four total games in order to be a champion, right? Right. So you, it's literally a one game, one game that you got to worry about. And we've seen like upsets happen more regularly, I think, in the NFL. Obviously, you need to go back and fact check this that, shit. What, but no, 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 hold on. But like I'm saying, like a three six matchup in the NFL, you can definitely upset. We've seen it not too long ago. I think with the Titans, right? Two yeah. years ago, the Titans upset the Patriots. Right. But like the Titans were damn near close to making the Super Bowl as a six seed, mm-hmm. and it's because of the fact that it's the format that's set up. You only need one game. It's you take it one game at a time. Whereas in the NBA, you go it's best seven of series. So there's always like. Um, you're always making a constant adjustments and stuff like that. So it's way more harder. Like from from a team's perspective, from a lower seed perspective, it's much harder to win so that why, way. why are we catering to the lower seed and not in general? Because if you're looking at it like that. But NBA, I am looking at it in general. No, Generally because the NBA, speaking, they have more time to prepare and they look not time to prepare, but they have more time for adjustments and they have more chances to like have an off night. If you have an off night in the NFL, you're done. Your whole season's over. So how is that easier in the NBA if you have more fallback options? In the NFL, you don't have a fallback option. You either show up that night or you, you're done. Uh, because I'm I'm basically saying that in the NBA, like, yeah, okay, in the playoffs, game one happens. This guy goes off. Okay, game two, they're game planning. They're like, okay, we're going to go ahead and just approach this situation differently with this player. So I'm saying you're making adjustments in the sense that, like, it's like a chess it's it's essentially a chess battle between two teams. Right. Obviously, but, the more talented te- team ends up winning most of the time. So, but I'm talking about 
At the same time, you look at you look at the lower seeds like six through eight or five through eight or four through eight, whatever the case may be. I'm saying it's much tougher to end up winning because of the fact that the format is best four out of seven. It's not like a one game series where, hey guys, all we need to do is just win one win one game and we're we because because it's not tough for you know, a number seven seed to win a game oh, okay. against a number two seed. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so you're proving my point. No, I'm not proving your point. There's a one-off night, right? If that happens in the NBA, you're fine. If that happens in the NFL, your season's over. That's a huge amount of pressure. You but have. I'm saying that that lower seed team needs to keep doing that. They need to win four times out of seven in order to advance, whereas so, a six seed... They just need to have a really good game, and then they move on to the next round. But why are we only catering to the lower seeds? Because I'm talking generally speaking. Yeah, Ge- I get I'm that. making the analogy like, okay, you have a lower seed. The lower seed, it's much harder to win at the NBA for a lower seed than it is. Uh, surely you can agree with this. Yeah. Than for a lower seed in the uh, NFL. Yes. Just theoretically speaking, correct? Yes. Which is why it would be much harder to win at the NBA. I mean, yeah, to— to win in the NBA. So you can also indicate that in the NFL, it's as, as difficult to win in the top half of the seed. If you're a one or two seed, you're not comfortable. You're no, not, you're well, not going to just blow through your competition. No, because if you're, the, if you're a one, okay. So back then one and two seeds had first round buys. So all, to, theoretically, all you need to do is just win three games and then you're a champion, right? Yeah. But three games against actual like elite top tier teams in the NBA. I mean, Let's be real. These first and first seed, eight seed matchups are cupcake matchups. Tup- okay, so first of all, uh, a one seed, they're going to end up playing either the um, number four or whatever. They're not going to play the number three seed anyways because three plays six, three most likely wins. Yes. And four plays five. That's a toss-up. Anything can happen. So it's not, you, can't, you can't say like it's there's not a, a cupcake there's a between huge- a one, and f- one versus four or five. For, I said one versus eight. One versus eight, there's a huge it's gap. A, it's a cupcake. Yes, so I agree taking, with so you. So take away four uh, but, series right there. Uh, oh, so, okay, so you're, you're you mean, essentially getting a first You mean to tell one. me the one seed m- more times, more times likely than not. I'm pretty sure we could go back and fact check this. They end up advancing to the AFC championship game. That's a one not, seed. No, they don't actually. How? If Okay, so if they're playing like a 4-5 a uh-huh. Seed, right. you mean to tell me who, who's more likely to advance, a one seed or a four or five? Most of the time, in the NFL, it's literally anything. Like there hasn't been a like you saw it this year with with the Chiefs again. They were the favorite the whole way right. through, and then the Bucks put together a historical run. It, it, okay, and you're making my point. The Chiefs ended up blazing through the AFC. It wasn't easy for them, by the way. They, How was it not easy? I mean, they still had competition with the Bills, and I can't remember who else they played right before they that. They played Cleveland. But Cleveland, it's because Patrick Mahomes ended up getting hurt, and then so the, they made it a little bit more competitive. What about the Steelers versus Browns? What about Steelers versus Browns? The Steelers were the favorites like the whole way through. and then the Browns, Were the Browns a sixth seed? Yeah, I think they might have been one of the lowest seeds. But anyway, like they show up and they... Or they may have taken the conference just because the Steelers fell off. I don't know. But the Steelers were the favorites like 90% of the season. Browns show up and blow them out the water. And the Steelers had an, an elite defense throughout most of the season, and then they just fall apart for one game. But I, So I can argue that the the way the NFL is set up, the way the format is set up, it it caters more to lower-seeded teams. So if it's catering more to the lower-seeded teams, wouldn't it make it harder for any team in general to win a, a Super Bowl? No, it, no, it increases those, their chances technically. Not at all, because every team okay, is so on an even playing. I, I, I see field. what you're saying. You're saying like for the for the more dominant teams, it's probably lesser to win. Uh, uh, this is all in theory. It's a little bit less of a chance to win versus the dominant teams in the NBA, right? Yeah. So if you but, want, if you want to use that argument for the lower, well, we're talking about generally speaking. Generally speaking, right. it's a, yes. You're saying like it's a free for all. So I think there's some confusion there. Like it, if it's a free for all, then that means it's just harder. Versus in the NBA, where we know like if you're a top seeded team, you're more likely to go. But I'm saying. Yes, if you're a top seeded team in the NBA, you're more likely to go. There isn't as much competition in the NFL, but I'm saying that's why it's harder for the other teams that are not dominant to end up winning. That's that's the way that I'm looking at that argument. I, I'm looking at it as you have one game, okay? And I know you know pressure is like the biggest factor in playoffs, right? It's like one of the biggest factors. You don't have time to make adjustments. You get halftime, you get 15 minutes, you go out there and you do your work. Correct. For the NBA, you have 
days in between to game plan. You I think have, I think just the way that we're looking at this question is just different. That that's, that's where fair. that's really the disagreement because you're looking at it more so of like uh yeah, the the way it's set up, it's just it's a little bit more tougher it's because because it's pressure. Yeah, do or die, whatever. But I'm saying for overall, if you look at all 12 teams that enter or back then it was 12 teams. If you look at all 12 teams, like you go and look at the odds for the six seeds to yeah. win the Super Bowl, it's not as crazy as like uh freaking uh the Portland Trailblazers last year when they entered the eighth seed. You go look at their odds at winning a title, it's significantly less. That's the point the that NBA, I'm trying to make. Right? In it's the NBA, less? Yeah. yeah, because it's harder to win in the NFL. All it's the harder teams are to win, fair. but it. But that's what I'm saying. It's it's you easier. My point. No, no, that, but that, we're looking at the question differently because I'm looking at it like you could be the worst team in the playoffs and still have a much better chance of winning it all versus a number eight seed in the playoffs. So wouldn't that make it more? It's tough? harder for the eight seed in the playoffs. But to, if you're looking in the at NBA. it, if you're looking at it like you're saying, you're trying to look at it as a general perspective. You just proved, or you just mentioned that. The odds are like pretty narrow in the NFL compared to the NBA. That's because no, it's an I, even. Pl- that, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying the odds are better for the worst team because in the it's, NFL because it's an even better. playing field. Because- Correct, but it's that makes it easier to go and win. A, a Super Bowl. No, that doesn't because you're playing real talent in the NBA. You have those series where you could just blow through them. But uh, Nassim, you're missing my point. I'm saying that the eighth seed, the seventh seed, the lower seeds in the NBA, Who cares about their them? odds. But that I'm looking at it from that perspective. I'm saying it's much tougher for those guys, those lower end tier teams, to end up winning an NBA championship. The odds are significantly less for them versus a six seed in the playoffs in the NFL. Because there's a huge talent drop off, right? We can both agree on that, that there is a significant drop in talent. It's a much greater significant, oh wait, oh, at the NBA level or the in the NFL? NBA. Correct. Okay, in the NFL, it is very balanced for the most part. If you're in those top six teams. I the- know, Nassim. So that makes it difficult. I'm saying that, oh my God, dude. dude I, don't, I don't think you're understanding my point. I, I'm trying to. Because but- I get your point, but I'm basically saying that it makes it, easier for NFL teams if it's a much more level playing field that makes it easier for, generally speaking for everybody else I don't agree with that. I know what you're saying but I don't agree with that and Wh- I, be, why just, because it's fair for everybody you have these holy old- shiz dude we're at 40 something we haven't even hit we hit like three topics <laughs> <laughs> all right we'll try not to spend too much longer on this I'm sorry but just because it's an even playing field, it gives everybody an equal chance. And when it becomes down to an equal chance on a one uh, one game, like it's bro, it's, we need this shit mathematically proven. That's the only way. Like okay. just to like prove the numbers work out in my favor. It's not gonna work out in your favor. What else we got left? Uh, man? Sorry about that, uh, guys. Uh-huh. What we um. Well, I feel like we hit most of it though. Like we we talked th- bits and pieces almost about the some of these topics, but. Um, you were looking at your phone earlier and you were looking at like 50, 40, 90. You saw something with like uh, a player, Stephen Curry, but yeah. um, that made me think about the first ever 50, 50, 100 club. Do you know who's part, who, do you know who's going to be in that? Okay. I'm not going to lie. I looked at your phone. And I think it was someone on Boston. No. Is, oh, okay. I was going to say Taco Fall, but no, I have no idea. No, no. So Taco Fall, first of all, doesn't get, I don't, so I don't know what the rules Is he are. Is actually eligible? So, yes, because they wrote an article about it. So, they obviously <laughs> talked about this. The guy plays about, like, 21 minutes a game. He played, like, 40 games. Th- that's a pretty good sample size, yeah. right? Yeah. Who, who is it? Tony Snell. What? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I look at this guy's stats. I mean, like, he's taking a decent amount of shots, like, four or five shots a game. Yeah. He's shooting barely. Okay, so he's, like, maybe at, like, 51% field goal. Yeah. But he's shooting like 55 from three, and then he shot maybe like 18 free throws. So he's shooting 100% from he free throw line. I he swear had, he, he has missed a miss. A, thought, Last year, he didn't miss either. I swear I thought he missed a free throw at the Rockets versus Bucks game. He made all of them? No, no, no. He plays for the Hawks. Tony Snell. Tony Snell. Who, oh, I was thinking Bobby Portis. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> no, so, Tony Snell, the dude with the braids. I don't know if yeah, you remember. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know why I mixed them two up. Really? Yeah. What the hell? Dude? It's crazy, dude. So... 
I don't know if he can just miss everything else and then he wins that award. Like, he'll be in that club, the 50-50 one. I would honestly do it. Like, just sit play. out every game? Yeah, just yeah. be like, yo, yeah, my, uh, my ankle is kind of bothering me. Yeah, or, uh, like, I would just avoid going to the free throw line. Like, if, if I'm going to the free throw line, I injure myself. And then just, you get taken off for the rest of the game. Yeah. Uh, but I don't know, man. I, did, first of all, what... 21 minutes a game, do you feel like, okay, well, this guy should be recognized as a 50-50-100? Yeah, that's that's a lot of minutes a game. And yeah. He's playing like 40-something games. Close to 50%, yeah. yeah. I mean, he's playing, I mean, he's, he hasn't missed a free throw. I know it's only 18. It's shots. funny, though, because if you look at the 50-40-90 club, you only, like, there's, I, I forgot how many players made it. It's probably like, le- it's less than 10. Yeah, it is. But you look at the names of that of that list and they're all elite players and yeah. then you have the 50 50 100 <laughs> club and then you see tony snell <laughs> that would be the greatest thing i actually really want that to happen <laughs> um do we have anything else that's talk- interesting to we, talk about we didn't really touch on all the the injuries uh which will kind of segue to for zion as well zion mm-hmm. is out indefinitely with a fractured finger uh, I don't know if you saw what his GM's comments were. No. He was basically saying like uh, that he blames the injury on officiating, poor officiating. Like Zion is just like an open target as yeah. soon as he gets to the paint, and it's like the worst officiating on a player he's seen since Shaq. I don't. I don't know what you think about that. I haven't watched many Pelicans games to like have that big of an opinion, but just looking at the NBA and how they officiate, the NBA is pretty like liberal in like how they call stuff like. People have argued like, oh my God, you got to let them play down low and all that stuff, yada, yada, yada. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it's like because Zion's more athletic, so he's jumping around more. So like the probability of him getting hurt is much more versus like these traditional guys who just back down their opponents, get it in the post. You know what I'm saying? It's less likely for them to get hurt that way. Yeah. Zion's more of an athletic freak. So like he's making all these moves and then he can like land awkwardly or whatever the case may be. So like, um, I don't know. I think he definitely overreacted that GM. Yeah. Um, but but I, th- I also think okay, maybe it's not the worst officiating since Shaq. But I also think big men are still like officiated poorly in the NBA. Like I feel like the shooters have more safety than the than the big men. Like in the paint, at least. You're saying big men have more safety? No, they have less safety. Like oh, versus lot- perimeter guys. Yeah, like they're always getting like hit and bumped and no one's ever calling anything yeah <clears throat> i mean yeah i see that just because of the fact that it's like it's probably a little bit more obvious to catch it on the perimeter versus down low because there's just so much bumping going down there yeah and you're not gonna you're not gonna just call everything you gotta let them go through some sort of physical whatever um but yeah that's i, I was disappointed when i read that he's gonna be out indefinitely because i really wanted the pelicans to make the play in yeah i really didn't want to see the spurs yeah. in there um but who knows? And then one last injury that we didn't get to talk, or two last injuries, Mitchell and Ubre. Ubre kind of affects the playing tournament a little. Mm-hmm. He's not their most. He, so what's his what's his injury and this like the impact of it? Like is it like I think significant? He was, I'm pretty sure he was out indefinitely. I could be wrong on that, but I think it was a pretty uh, pretty big injury. I can't remember. I mixed him and Mitchell up. Mitchell is out for like one or two more weeks. Yeah, which is pretty big because they're in the race for the one seed right, right. now. So. I mean, if they stay on that second seed and Lakers come back, they could end up playing Lakers first round, which I believe is a is a cup. That's insane. If we see like if the Lakers make the eighth seed and we see a Jazz uh, Lakers matchup, well, they'd have to get they'd have to get the seventh seed, is what I'm saying. The Lakers. It, oh, because Jazz are number two right now. Yeah, remember the Suns over, took over number one. But I thought they came back and took it back. If they the did, well, if they did, then I don't know. But I think Jazz are still number one. I think if Mitchell, I mean, as long as Mitchell's out, I think the Suns still have a chance. Regardless, we're gonna see Phoenix Lakers probably most likely or Utah Lakers, which is a crazy first round. Yeah, and that I'm, sucks for them, dude. Yeah, that's, like both of them to have like just successful seasons and then because f- Lakers are most likely probably gonna be not most likely, but. Like the odds of compared to in the past of a two seed and a one seed winning in the first round for them, it's going to be much less just because they're going to be matched up with the Lakers. Yeah, dude. I don't know if uh, I want to look at the odds and man, if it's if it's uh, you might you might put some money down if they're favoring the the Jazz or Suns for some reason. I, I'll probably I'm not really a betting man, but I might throw some money there. The only bet I've literally ever done was the Patrick Mahomes bet at the Super Bowl or the the Chiefs bet. 
Oh, okay. Where I did the fifty dollars for them to come back. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. For, for the Chiefs. Yeah, uh, halftime. The me, me, we Sam, and someone else were just <laughs> hammering the money line. <laughs> That's hilarious. Um, yeah. Other than that, do you see anything else on there that we could have talked about? No, honestly, we we really hit everything. We we're just jumping back and yeah. forth, and then we dominated with our arguments between the NBA thing. And some that. some good back and forth going on between us this episode. Um, yeah. Stephen A. Smith, we'd love to have you on so we can shit on you. Yeah, come to the show. Come to the show, man. <laughs> uh, yeah, go ahead and wrap it up. Let them know where they can find us. All that good stuff. All right. Uh, thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next time. Later. No, I'm just kidding. All right. If you are a visual watcher, you can catch us on YouTube. If you don't want to watch us for an hour, you can also check us out on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Yeah. Uh, I will attach those somewhere right there. They'll be right there, guys. I, I don't want to point at it because last time it was hard to edit and put it there. So, uh, if And you could also follow us on social media on our Twitter and Instagram, which I'll also put on the wall while I'm talking. Um, we post snippets, and Hassan has been tweeting off of that account um, pretty much every day just talking about whatever he's seeing in the NBA. Yeah. I chime in maybe like once a week, whenever I. Yeah, some good back and forth action going on on the tweets. Yeah, or... yeah. Me and Hassan, I had a little discussion yesterday on Twitter about the, the best player versus most important player. Yeah, Doesn't tag make them. Any sense. Um, Twitter for like what we're doing, it's not like it's not as friendly to post content from our show on Twitter than it is with Instagram. Yeah, I mean yeah. Twitter's the worst. I hate. I just want to put. Yeah, that out there. it's literally. It, I, before well, we hold on. What do you mean by NBA Twitter is the worst? The the fan accounts on NBA, right? Like, the, uh, like you don't get much engagement, or no, like the Curry accounts and all that. They're yeah. literally twelve year olds, and I they're sp- fan pages. You're talking about fan pages. I hate them. Every time I go to like a LeBron tweet or a Woj tweet, I'm trying to like read genuine reactions, and all I see is. La Mickey is O for whatever, or Kafrod <laughs> is uh, gonna win a Mickey Mouse ring. Like, shut up. What's Kafrod? Kevin Durant being a fraud. They just put Kafrod. Kafrod. That's not even creative. They're they're the most corny people. They're probably thirteen and they need to be studying for a biology test. Like, they do, honestly. Kids, make sure you study. Yeah, you weirdos. Um, yeah, but thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure you catch us. Uh, we'll be posting this on Wednesday, recording every Saturdays. We love you all. We appreciate the support. And until next time, later. Peace. Trauma bonds got close off about of scores. Equal pain, so we think it's equal game. Same team, but it's different hearts. Same goals, but it's different shots. Thought we was winning the same. Turns out you were just running me game. Should've known, but I couldn't guess it. It's a damn shame.